What's going on guys? It's Jake and sometimes Beyblades just cost a lot of money. You know, sometimes just getting stuff from Japan or even getting Hasbro Beyblades can cost quite a bit, especially if you're looking for one that is just a little bit more rare. And when talking about rare Beyblades, I don't think anything can come close to the Takara Tomy minigame base. If you didn't know, Takara Tomy actually has their own Beyblade Burst app. And what you can do is that whenever you buy Beyblades, they come with a QR code, kind of like Hasbro. But they are one time use only, and you can scan it onto the app and get points, and then use those points to play a mini game. And if you get really, really lucky, you might be able to win a very, very rare Beyblade. Examples of this would be Amaterios, Balder, Orichalcum, and then Shining Amaterios later on. Now just talking about Orichalcum for an example, that came out after Balder and Amaterios, and when it released, oh boy was it expensive. Really, I think it was almost impossible to get this Beyblade for under around four or 500 bucks. Just getting a certain part from this Beyblade would be costing hundreds of dollars. Well, what if I told you you could get that Bey and Chozy Amaterios or Shining Amaterios for not $500, but for $13. Before we get into it though, let's get this video to 1100 likes because what you are about to see is just pretty dang cool. But that wasn't. So let's just let's just let's just move on. So Hasbro never released Amaterios and Balder single packs. It released it in like a micro set. But who cares? But surprisingly, they actually released them. But they're not $500. They're only around 13 bucks. But you know, it is Hasbro we're talking about. Sometimes their Beyblades just are a little... <laughs> no, no. So are these Bays even worth the $13? Are they comparable to the Takara Tomy Super Rare versions? Well, let's find out, and we're gonna start with Orichalcum. Now, one of the reasons why the Takara Tomy version of this Beyblade was just so incredibly expensive and hard to come by was because of the competitive parts. You had Okta, which is still, I think, the heaviest driver in the game. And then you had Outer, which is a super balanced disc. And it was even banned for a little while on the WBO. Orichalcum, the actual layer part, was not as crazy, but it still, you know, looked really, really cool. Now, when talking about the differences between the Hasbro and the Takara Tomy, of course, Hasbro has no teeth. You know, it's kind of obvious, actually. Some of the details on the layer are a little bit different. It still has its gimmick that whenever it spins, uh, the Beyblade kind of expands a little bit. But whenever it does that, there aren't as many of those red details that we saw in the Takara Tomy version, which is kind of lame. But, you know, it's not that bad. And another difference is that the Hasbro version does not have the really, really cool green paint scheme on outer, which does really, really suck. I don't, I don't know why Hasbro still has not done that yet. They do it sometimes and they don't do it other times. <sighs> why? So now let's move on to Amaterios A3. And this one is a little bit more of a harder sell than Orichalcum. And the main reason why is because Orichalcum was a Beyblade Burst God Bay, so it came out during the second season. Amaterios A3, however, came out during Cho Z. So the original has metal, the Hasbro one does not. So moving on to the parts, we have Anchor up first, and I was really never too crazy about this driver. It looked really, really cool, but it seemed just like a Unite, but just more extreme. Then we have the disc and the frame, which is arrow and angle, and really it's pretty similar to the Takara Tomy version. Although I do believe that the Takara Tomy version was gold. If it wasn't, please correct me down in the comments. But if it was, then we lose that gold paint scheme, just like we lost the cool green one on Orichalcum. Oh, my heart. And then finally, we move on to the most controversial part of the Beyblade, at least to me, and it's the layer itself. 
And I say it's so controversial because it does not have metal. So Amaterios A3 is supposed to be an attack type, but if you know Turbo Beyblades, they don't really hit that hard because they are just so light. But I think it's still a little bit too early to call whether or not Amaterios would hit hard or not. So I think it's time to do a couple of test battles to see what we can come up with. So let's just get right into it. Overall, I think that these Beyblades look really good, they have a nice aesthetic to them, and they would look really good in your collection. But besides that, and besides, you know, Outer and Okta on Orichalcum, I think there are definitely better Beyblades that you can buy. I'd still recommend picking them up, but there are better options out there. But if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like down below, and hit that subscribe button to join the Nook Nation. And I will see you guys next time. Have fun and bail away.